Should Christians pray for the dead? Well, that's the question that we are looking at in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It is Saturday, September 12th, 2020. And I'm thankful that you're here with us for another devotion. Let's hear from God as we seek to answer this question, as we dive into our devotion. Uh, we've got the only opinion that matters in all things. Lord, our triune God, and He's spoken to us clearly in His Word. So let's turn to it now. Revelation. This one should be easy for you to find. Turn in your Bibles all the way to the end. You come to the book of Revelation. And we're turning to Revelation chapter 14, and we're just going to read verse 13. So Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. That's one of a, a few of our study passages that are down in the description uh, below the video there. So I hope you'll take time to, to prayerfully read through those and uh, enjoy your time of communion with the Lord and read through those and then pray and uh, interact in fellowship with our great God today. Uh, those, those couple passages, those few study passages down there, they, they come together and they bring us our theology portion that uh, we're going to read from today. Now we're reading from Westminster Confession of Faith. Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 21, section 4. Prayer is to be made for things lawful and for all sorts of men living or that shall live hereafter, but not for the dead, nor for those of whom it may be known that they have sinned the sin unto death. We come back to our question. Should Christians pray for the dead? No. No, Christians shouldn't. There's The Bible uh, makes it pretty clear that there uh, was, there's no reason to pray for the dead. Uh, when we die, we go either to heaven or to hell. We either go into the very presence of our Savior in heaven or we go to hell. And then in death, we await the final judgment where we will be resurrected. Uh, we will then be given our resurrected bodies and we will either live for all eternity bodily in either hell or the new heavens and the new earth. There's no in-between. There's no other place. When you die, you're your spirit or soul does not wander the earth. You do not stay behind to help people or to hurt people. There's not a purgatory that some um, traditions, some false religions, some groups believe in. There's not an, an intermediate state where you have to work out your salvation. You have to do these things. You don't become an angel when you die. Uh, none of this is supported in the scriptures. Uh, you don't sit and listen to the prayers of those on earth that you might then help or bring those needs to God. Uh, you are not a mediator after you die. Um, there's, there's a lot of, of unbiblical thinking when it comes to what happens to you after death. And prayer gets pulled into this. There's, there's false religions that we find uh, around the world, false traditions, false understandings of the Scripture uh, that, that do encourage and have you pray to the dead or pray for the dead. So it might be that you know, you're praying that someone might get out of whatever state they're in so that they might then be in heaven. But the Scriptures are pretty clear that is wants to die for man and then judgment. Uh, there's not a, after death, there's not a, a, a movement there. The Lord gives life and salvation 
this side of death. And once we die, uh, we are then taken to one of two states. That's either uh, in glory or, or damnation, and, and there's not a movement between the two. So when you go to heaven, when you die, and then, of course, as we look forward to the new heavens and the new earth, uh, you'll be living in a glorified state so that you will not be sinful anymore. So there is no way uh, that one might do something, sin, that would cause you to be kicked out of the presence of God in heaven or the new heavens and the new earth. Uh, and the same is when you're in hell, there's not an opportunity for you to repent there. Uh, we, you know, we see this throughout the scriptures. There's lots of different places. Uh, one particular uh, interesting spot is, is when, when Nathan the prophet comes to David because David has done a horrible thing. He's killed his friend. Well, he, he killed him in the sense that he put them, him in a place in battle where it was guaranteed he would die. He even made sure that he would be, his support would be pulled back so that he would die this glorious you know, sacrificial death and battle, but yet it was set up for him to die. So David, in essence, kills his friend that he might take his wife. They have a child, and uh, there is judgment brought, and, and Nathan the prophet comes and tells him that this child is not going to live. David cries out to God as the child is sick, this newborn. He's crying out to God. When the child does die, David stops. He prays no more. It says he goes and gets cleaned up. It's as if he went, goes and showers and, and puts on some new clothes. And he, and he then has a different mind. And his mind then is not, I will continue to pray for my child. But he, he turns to an attitude of, I will see my child after death. And he moves on. And it's clear that he's, he's understood. Nathan the prophet does not correct him or change him that, that there is no more praying now. It is a done deal. Uh, the child has died. And we see other places, parables, uh, as Jesus, the parable of Lazarus, the rich man, and there's conversation there. And, and Jesus makes it clear there, there's, no, you know, there's no sending messengers into hell to try to bring the gospel after the fact that someone might repent and believe. So we're not to pray. The Bible does not support that. We're, we're not to pray for the dead. We're not to pray to the dead. You, you can't find that anywhere in the Bible. Uh, and yes, I understand that there are traditions, there are uh, groups, false religions, you name it, around the world that do things like this. Uh, but it is not, it's not supported in God's Word, His revelation, which is sufficient for life. It's where God has spoken, so we might be able to understand. So, as we're working through our little mini-season here of prayer, and we look at this very specific thing. No. No Christian should not pray to or for the dead. Because our only hope and our only mediator between ourselves and God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And we remember that. We've been talking about prayer and how we go about prayer. We pray in the righteousness of Christ. He's who gives us access to the Father. And we pray in the power of the Spirit. So we'll continue to to talk more and more uh, about prayer, short devotions. Lord willing, they're encouraging you as we discuss these things. So be encouraged. Perhaps even change a little bit of your uh, thought process about things. Submit to God's Word, for that is good. Oh Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We ask that you'd help us to understand your truth better and better every day. Uh, Lord, let us not be those who would listen to the ideas of, of others, of men, uh, as they try to, as they try especially to grapple with things as, as difficult as death, for we were not created to die, and, and sin is what brought that in the fall. Uh, Lord, we have a hard time with it as people. Let our only hope be in Christ, and let us look to your word for answers and truth. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to be with you again. Like, subscribe, share with friends and family until we are together tomorrow or let's say it's Saturday. So this evening, perhaps, may the Lord bless